Here we're going to look at the use reducer hook. We can import it from React as use reducer. Then we can make a new function component and we'll call it count. This component is going to just render out a number called the count. And we don't have this yet. So we're going to use use reducer to create this piece of state for us and also manage updating it. When you call a use reducer, it needs two arguments. The first is a reducer function takes the current state and an action, and it returns a new state. We'll deal with that in a second. And the second argument is the initial state. So we'll start off with a count of zero. User reducer returns an array of two elements. There is the current state, so we'll call that count. And then there's a dispatch function, which you can use to dispatch actions, which will end up calling this function with the action you dispatch. So if you've seen the use state hook, this is kind of similar, except that you have a reducer function as an intermediary when you want to change the state. So instead of setting state directly, you call dispatch with an action, and the action can be anything. And you'll handle that action in here and return a new state. Then the component will re-render, and the count will be whatever that new state was. So let's try this out right now. We'll replace this div with count and it renders out zero. So now let's add a button and this will just be increment. And when we click it, we want to dispatch an action through this reducer. And we get to decide whatever that action looks like. It doesn't have to be like a Redux looking action. It could be anything. So let's say dispatch add, just the string add. And if we click this, well, it doesn't work. When we click it, uh, the reducer doesn't return anything. So the count disappears. It sort of makes sense. It starts off at zero. And then when you click, it dispatches an action and this returns undefined and then we get nothing. So let's return state. And now if we click the button, I'm guessing it's going to not do anything. Awesome. Let's say if action equals add, then we'll return state plus one. Otherwise, we'll just return the state unchanged. Try increment now. And the number increments. Cool. So just for completeness here, let's try adding another button that'll decrement. And I'll just use any old string here, like a minus. Now, if we click increment, it'll work. And decrement will do nothing, because we're not handling this case up here. So we can add, let's change this into a switch, actually. Because all these if else's is going to get kind of messy. So we can switch on action. And if it looks like add, we will return the state plus one. And if it looks like the minus sign, we can return state minus one. And otherwise, we'll just return state as it is. Now we can increment it, and we can decrement it, and awesome. Now I'm not saying you should name your actions like this, or that you should pick names out of thin air, but I'm just doing it to prove that this works, and you aren't forced into making actions that look like objects with types and all that. Of course, if your component is more complicated, you'll probably want to do something like that anyway. So let's look at a more complex component where the actions might be a little more structured. So I'm going to delete this component and create a new one called shopping list. And let's for now just render list and we'll change this here to render out the shopping list. So what we'd like this component to do is maintain a shopping list for us. So we're going to need a list of items and then a way to display that list. So we'll use use reducer to do that. And the reducer function is going to take the state and an action. We'll just start off returning the state unchanged. And the initial state is going to be an empty array because we're going to have a list here. Then we'll destructure the return value into the items and dispatch. Down where we render the list, we're going to render a unordered list and we'll map over the items. So we'll say items.map item, and for each item, we're going to return an li, where the key is the item ID, and the content is item name. 
save this and let Prettier do its work. And now it's rendering nothing because our list is empty. Let's wrap this UL in a fragment, which won't render any elements to the DOM, and insert an input that'll let us type in the name of an item. We're going to get a ref to this input so that we can get its value out later without having to store its value in state and all that. There's another hook called useRef, and it can hold a reference to a DOM node, like our input here, and then let us access it directly later. So we'll create a variable called input ref and call use ref to create one of these. And we could pass an initial value, but we're going to leave it empty, which will set it undefined. Then we pass this ref object into the input. When React first renders this, it'll point the input ref at the DOM node, and then we can access it with input ref.current. So if we save this, we have an input now and we can type in it. Now let's wrap the input in a form. This will let us be able to press enter to add an item to the list. We just need to provide a submit handler. So on submit is handle submit. We'll create the function up here, call it handle submit, and it takes an event. The first thing we want to do is call prevent default on that event. Otherwise the page is going to refresh and we'll lose everything. After that though, we want to dispatch an action to add something to the list. So we'll call dispatch here. And we get to decide here what the shape of our actions are. So in the counter example, we used a string and the reducer decided whether to increment or decrement based on the string. Here, we want to actually pass along the value of this input. So we'll use an object so that we have a little more flexibility in the future. If we want to add other kinds of actions, an object will give us that flexibility. We're going to set the type to add and the name to input ref dot current dot value. Input ref dot current refers to the DOM node and the dot value pulls out the text. So if we try this out now, it shouldn't do anything. We hit enter and it does nothing. Let's after dispatching, why don't we wipe out that value? So we'll do input ref dot current dot value equals empty. Then we can try this out. And when we hit enter, we see that it wipes out. So all that's left is to handle the action up in the reducer. Since we're making the assumption that our actions are objects and they're all going to have a type, we can switch on action.type. And in here, we'll handle the case where the type is add. And what we want to do, since our state is going to be an array, we're going to return a new array where we copy in everything from state. And then we add our new item here. The name comes from action.name because our action object has a name property. And then we also have to give it an ID. We'd like this ID to be unique because it's going to be used as the key and React requires keys to be unique. Since we have this state array and it's got a length property, I'm going to use that as the ID here. And this isn't a perfect key, but it's going to work for our purposes because as you add items to the array, the key is going to be zero and then it's going to be one and then it's going to be two. But we could get into trouble if we end up deleting an element and then adding a new one, and we might end up with some duplicate keys. But for our purposes here, this will be okay. So let's add an item to the list, and we hit enter, and it gets added to the list and re-rendered. So this is pretty simple. We're only handling one action right now, and just adding items to the list. What if we wanted to be able to remove them? Well, we'd need a way of selecting an item to remove it. Maybe the item itself could have a button that just says X. And when we click this button, we'd like to delete the item from the list. So I'm just going to write this function inline. We want to dispatch an action where the type is remove. And we need a way of specifying which item to remove. So we'll pass in the items index, which we don't have right now. But the map function actually gives you two arguments. There's the item itself and the index. So if we pull that in here, we can pass it along. Let's save this and try it out. It shouldn't do anything yet. We add milk and click X. We get an error because we dispatched an action that we're not handling up here and the reducer returned undefined, which is why we're getting can't read property map of undefined. So the way to fix that is to add a default case that just returns the state unchanged. Now if we go and add an item and click X, doesn't do anything. That's expected. So how can we do this? We want to handle the case where the 
action type is remove, and we have our existing array. So we're going to return state.filter, and we want to remove the one that has the index specified in the action. So filter, same as map, gets two arguments. There's the item itself and then the index. We don't care about the item here. We just care about the index. So I'm naming the item with underscore. And filter will keep the elements where this returns true. So we want to return true for everything but this index. So we'll say index not equal to action dot index. Save this. And now if I add A, B, C, we should be able to click the X on B and have B disappear. Same for A, same for C. Let's add one more action to clear the list. Underneath the form, we're going to add a button that just says clear. And when you click the button, it will dispatch an action of type clear. Now we're not handling this action up here yet. So if we add items and click clear, it'll do nothing. But at least we're handling the default state now, so we're not getting an error. So let's handle a case where action type is clear. And all we need to do is return an empty array. Now we can add new items, A, B, C, and click clear. And they're all wiped out.